I have piles. Yay! I don't normally endorse Googling symptoms, but I'm only human and I'm weak. I got a big belly. I've lost the bottom of my vagina. Look at my science drawings. And I just wanted to turn the camera on and complain about it all. I'm really feeling it. I'm like, am I done? I feel done. The sperm splatted and now I'm pregnant and about to give birth. And there you go, I'm already out of breath. <laughs> I'm currently carrying around the weight of three massive tits. Oh, my bum hole just leaked. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Pregnancy is beautiful. It's the miracle of life. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Hormone Diaries and this is trimester three. This is the final installment of this pregnancy. What on earth, how have we got here already? It feels very strange. <laughs> the baby is imminent. So currently, as I'm filming this, I am 37 weeks pregnant and the baby could basically come any day now in the next month. So it could be tomorrow or it could be <laughs> like four or five weeks from now and that just feels very strange of like preparing and managing expectations of like how long we're going to be waiting for who knows but i wanted to film this now so there's time to edit and get it for your viewing pleasure ready to go just in case the baby does come early so trimester three definitely felt a shift this episode of The Hormone Diaries is going to be filled with lots of scans, lots of appointments, lots of aches and pains, and also figuring out what our birth preferences are and how that is all going to go. Potentially. Maybe. Who knows? Again, do I have any control over this? Barely. Barely, maybe a smidge. Do stay to the end because I'm gonna be filling in some gaps that like vlog Hannah maybe left out and also kind of explaining how my maternity leave and stuff is going to go and a final bump update. So hopefully that'll kind of round things off and answer any questions that you have <laughs> after seeing how it all went really. So without further ado, just let past Hannah take it away. Good morning. It is trimester three. We are in the home stretch and we are headed to the hospital for my 28 week scan. And then this afternoon we have the appointment with the consultant. So it's a big hospital appointment day. Floor update. I've got my notes. It was a good news kind of day. The first good news is that um, doctor's appointment was the quickest <laughs> one we've ever had there's always so much waiting but that was a really quick one so the scan was fine it was just a growth scan so they're checking like the size of the baby and stuff and apparently baby is growing normally and i also got to learn about kind of where they're currently positioned so apparently head is down here somewhere and then like their back apparently is here with some legs I can't remember. So apparently the baby currently weighs 1.235 kilograms, which is two pounds and 12 ounces. That is so little, that's still so little. But also when I did the weighing my boobs video, wasn't like one of my boobs about 1.2 kilos, like around that. So baby currently is the weight of one of my boobs. I'm currently carrying around the weight of three massive tits. What fun. <laughs> I also had another full blood count done because they just want to check that I've got all of the stuff that I need, um, especially when I don't have a colon to like absorb stuff. So they want to make sure that I'm getting all of the nutrients and things. The other good news is that I don't have to have blood thinning injections. <laughs> ah! This came up at like my last two consultant appointments um, but today they were like, you don't hit the criteria of people that we think would need blood thinning injections. And that's basically because my colitis isn't like in flare and I'm not currently on treatment for it. So it's like the inflammation apparently from colitis that would mean that I'm like at higher risk for blood clots, which would 
be why they would put me on blood thinning injections, but they didn't deem that a risk for me. And so I don't have to do those injections, <laughs> which I'm so happy about because I was not looking forward to them. The other good news, I guess, although it depends which way you look at it, it's not bad news basically, is that the team of doctors, the obstetricians and stuff, had their like meeting thing where they talk about certain patients and different cases and stuff. And when it came to me, they decided that they would be happy for me to have a vaginal birth, which is kind of like based off what they know about me and obviously what they know about birth, um, but also based off what my IBD consultant said, which is that he has no issue with me going for a vaginal birth if that's what I want. So that's interesting. It's basically just kind of like up to me <laughs> in terms of what I want. Like I could still have an elective cesarean if that's something that I wanted, but the doctors are happy for me to have a vaginal birth if that's what I want. One of the things I did ask though was like, okay, if I wanted to have a vaginal birth then could I have it at the birth center, which is the midwife led unit, instead of being immediately admitted to the consultant led labor ward. And they basically referred me to see the consultant midwife in the birth options <laughs> clinic. So we have that appointment in like two weeks time where we're gonna speak to the consultant midwife and be like, will you let me in? <laughs> <laughs> because they have a certain criteria of pregnant folks that they will allow to give birth at the birth center. We'll see. I know that like, in terms of like your rights as like a birthing person that you can give birth wherever you want. <laughs> it's not in my personality to kind of like <laughs> fight those kinds of things. And I don't think I like care that much if they're like, mm, no, you don't meet our criteria. We'll see how I feel. I would really like to give birth at the birth center if the consultant midwife thinks that that would be like a okay thing for me. So I have my anti-D injection on Friday and then in four weeks time at 32 weeks, I have a, another scan and a follow-up with the obstetrician and yeah, and got this midwife birth options appointment too. So yeah, it's always the case of like, we went in for two appointments today and we came out with three. <laughs> but hey, that feels good. I'm glad the scan went well, baby's growing, good heartbeat, all of that stuff. Happy days, 28 weeks. Welcome to trimester three. Let's fucking do this. <laughs> Heading off to the hospital to get my anti-D injection. You nervous? Oh my God, why? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what if I come back and I don't like you anymore? What? <laughs> Anti-D. Mm -hmm. No, this is not medical <laughs> information. <laughs> my anti-D injection was all good. And also the results of my blood tests from two days ago came back all fine, except low iron. And so my iron is now low enough that I'm being prescribed iron supplements. I've always been told that my iron has been on like the cusp, but I've never like actually been given anything to boost it back up, but now I have. So I've got to take some iron tablets. Yeah, I've been real, real tired today. I still like you. After the anti-D, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> We're back on the bed with a full face of makeup because I just finished um, making some content for a brand and I'm knackered. Yesterday was also a very busy content day. Did lots of filming in the morning and then me and Dan had an appointment with the consultant midwife in the afternoon. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm feeling it all today. Yesterday was a big day and then this morning also very energy. <laughs> using, wow, can't even form sentences. I have definitely noticed a reduction in energy. Also, I'm really hungry right now, um, but I don't think there's anything to eat in the flat, so I might need to actually go out and get something. But yeah, super tired and just get exhausted really easily from doing stuff and having to go to bed quite early. And then the hunger thing is interesting. Like, I wasn't having food issues for ages, and now it's like all come back, but it's just that I get hungry really quickly. 
but I also get full really quickly. <laughs> so I'll like eat something, I'll get full. And then like two hours later, I'll be like, I'm starving again. <laughs> so yeah, I need to kind of make sure I have lots of snacks on me so that I can actually properly eat <laughs> and fix my hunger between meals because, oof, getting very hungry. Baby's kicks are definitely getting a lot more powerful and they've kind of like moved around a bit as well. Like where I was mostly feeling movements like on either side of my belly. Now I'm either feeling them like really low down or really high up. And I've heard lots of people <laughs> saying things about like baby's feet getting like lodged in their ribs. And I've not quite felt something like that yet, but I definitely can feel them kind of like knocking on the ribs. Like they're definitely like right up there. So yeah, it's very strange. And like the movements are less like, oh, wasn't that a fun flutter? And they're definitely more like jerky and strong. And like, sometimes the baby will move in a way that literally makes me just go <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> like what's happening? And then the other thing is just, I've been crying <laughs> a lot more. I just keep on getting quite upset <laughs> about things. I can't even remember any specifics right now, but in general, it's like, if something small has upset me and I'm feeling quite like emotionally vulnerable, then it just kind of like builds instantly. It's not something that I can really handle <laughs> anymore. And I just kind of spiral. And then the next thing I know, I'm like <laughs> bawling my eyes out and just like, done. <laughs> so there's that as well, which is very strange. It's like maybe happened a few times. It's not fun. I just, I feel really needy still. Like I feel sometimes still quite isolated as well. Like I'm just concentrating a lot on work right now. And it just means that my evenings, I'm just really tired. So I'm also just like not doing a huge amount of socializing. And that's also partly due to COVID because <laughs> it's still out there. I don't know, a lot of that. But yes, on top of all of the pregnancy stuff, I've obviously been dealing with having a stoma. And by the time you're watching this, there'll have already been a whole video about like pregnancy and stoma stuff. So go watch that for the details. <laughs> but it feels weird to not mention it in this like third trimester vlog as well, just to acknowledge that like, I've also <laughs> been dealing with the stoma, <laughs> which has been a whole thing. But where I'm at now, it's definitely in a better place. So feeling better about that. The other thing that I don't think that I've mentioned that is kind of like specific to like my body situation. So I still have my rectal stump. They didn't remove that during my surgery. And your rectum produces mucus to help like lubricate the poo as it comes out. Now, obviously I don't poo out my bum anymore, but my rectum does still produce mucus. Now, normally my bum hole would just pass the mucus very casually, when I sit on a toilet and like everything is relaxed. However, <laughs> I don't know if it's cause like baby is pressing down there or just like everything is like not as strong down there. I'm, I don't know. Basically I feel like I need to do Kegels for my rectum because I will just be chilling out like I am now. I'll just be hanging out and then suddenly I'll be like, oh, my bum hole just leaked. <laughs> no warning, no control over it whatsoever. And I can just feel that some mucus has just like come out of my bum and into my knickers. And I'm like, great. <laughs> it's never a lot, so it's fine. It doesn't like actually make being in my underwear uncomfortable or anything, but usually I will just like go to the toilet and give myself a little, a little wipe down. Um, but it's just so strange. It's just like, oh, there's my leaky bum hole again. What fun. I'm gonna get some food and then I'm gonna update you about this midwife appointment. Cause it was a lot of fun. I'm not hungry anymore, but I am still tired. Great. So our midwife appointment yesterday was like the birth options one with the consultant midwife. And I was like fully going in, preparing to have to like state my case as to why I should be able to give birth at the birth center and not on the labor ward. Like I thought that they would consider me not low risk enough, but <laughs> that was not the case at all. Like literally the first thing that the midwife said to us was your body, your baby, your birth, your choice. And I was like, 
Yes, thank you. <laughs> so that was very nice to hear. And also she was brilliant. Like every single midwife that we've met, they're just such great people. Also, she gave us a tour of the birth center. So we got to like see one of the birthing rooms that they have with the big double bed and the pool and other stuff going on. And we had a little practice go on this birthing chair. It was great. It all felt very positive um, and exciting. And she was just like, hey, other than like you having an ileostomy and I'm pretty sure she mentioned that they have another person, another pregnant person who has an ileostomy as well. And her husband <laughs> has one too. So obviously he's not given birth, but it's something that she's familiar with, which feels really good as well. But she was like, other than like, you know, your previous surgeries and your stoma, you're a fit and healthy person. And so nothing else about me like makes me higher risk. And actually, those surgeries and the stoma, as the consultants had decided, is fine. <laughs> like, it's fine for me to try and give birth vaginally. So that is the current plan, is to at least start on the midwife-led birth centre unit at my hospital's, like, maternity ward. However, there were lots of howevers, because you just gotta play it by ear a lot of the time, like currently the situation, she's like more than happy, like, yes, come on in kind of thing. And even even so she was just like, you know, as things change, if they change, what they do is they tell you about all the options and the different risks, but then ultimately it's still your decision, what you wanna do. So when she saw me and Dan, one of the first things <laughs> that she said, she was like, ah, you're a very little person and he, <laughs> is a very big person. And so there was definitely some concern she had around like my size and potentially the baby size. But because we're having serial scans, we'll have like lots more information about the size of the baby, about the position of the baby. And so then can use that to make a more informed judgment about what we wanna do. Also, she explained the charts to us because Dan and I had kind of, interpreted the charts incorrectly, but no one had really explained them to us. So when you have your scans, basically lots of lines like this relating to different things that they're measuring in the baby. So like say this is size or weight or whatever, our baby was like here. So we thought that meant that baby was on the smaller side of average. So I thought I was carrying a smallish baby, a smallish average-ish baby. Turns out, not the case. <laughs> As the midwife explained, these lines apparently that are on the scan results sheet are based off a five foot six white European woman. And whilst yes, I am a white European woman, I am definitely not five foot six. I am five foot. So, what they give you is a specific to you growth chart. So that is specific to my height and my weight. So it looks something like this. <laughs> Look at my science drawings. Oh, I really need my like lab coat and glasses on now for this bit, don't I? So what we have here is along this axis is the weight of the baby. I think weight size, what one of the things. <laughs> and along here is like how many weeks you are. And if the baby is like in this middle bit, then that means pretty average. And then if they're in, you know, the next bit, that means they're bigger. If they're in this lower bit, that means they're like on the smaller side. Our baby in comparison to me or in relation to my size is big, <laughs> not massive but we'll see if they grow. Well, they definitely will grow, but like by how much? So let's say that's where our baby is at the moment. Apparently the baby is in the 50th to the 90th percentile, but obviously that's still like quite a big amount of difference. So yeah, that was one of the things that luckily, because I'm having serial scans, they can kind of 
keep an eye on because one of the things the midwife said was like if the baby continues to be like here fine if the baby starts being like whoop, then you might be like hmm <laughs> So as well as continuing our serial scans and appointments with the consultant, her and her team of midwives are going to start seeing us as well. So we're going to see them after my next scan and consultant appointment so that they can kind of see everything that's going on as well. So yeah, that was a really positive appointment. Dan and I definitely like both came out of that just like feeling like, woo! fun like birth what an exciting time it's gonna be great <laughs> but obviously we're still just like really open to things changing depending on the scans and stuff and ultimately I just I just feel very well looked after by everyone at the hospital like it's kind of like all hands on deck just making sure that everything's good you know that's what their jobs are obviously but I, I'm just feeling I'm feeling good about it we are three quarters of the way through pregnancy <laughs> 10 weeks to go until my due date Ah, uh, I think I'm gonna lie down for the rest of the afternoon. Ooh hoo hoo. I am 31 weeks today. This kind of like pointy <laughs> bit of my belly is more my stoma <laughs> than baby belly. Yeah, it looks so pointy, but that's, that's my stoma. That's definitely not like the pregnancy bump. There we go. That's a bit better. There you could, that's all pregnancy bump. I just learned that 37 weeks counts as full term and so baby could be born in six weeks time and that wouldn't be considered early that wouldn't be considered early but obviously like anywhere between six and ten weeks now ish there's gonna be a baby <laughs> what 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 but yeah oh my god i had my 30th birthday on the weekend and definitely overdid it in terms of like body movement, energy, moving around, like staying up later than I normally would have. Because yesterday, the day after my birthday, I just, I felt hungover. Like I was so tired. I basically spent most of the day in bed, lots of napping, felt like shit, felt awful. And I was like, I didn't even drink. I just, I just over exerted myself. So yeah. It, I mean, can I be like, worth it? I did have a great time on my birthday. So I'm like, yes, I'm glad I did that, but holy shit. But I got some good sleep last night. And so, but yeah, I think lesson learned, Hannah, just keep having chill evenings and going to bed early-ish so that you don't completely wreck yourself. Um, yeah, I do feel like I'm getting like kicked in the ass a bit by the third trimester. The NHS start for life pregnancy thing says I'm about to go for another growth spurt as well so it's gonna get bigger. I'm really starting to feel like the third trimester is just kicking my ass. I had to have a nap this afternoon because I was just so tired and so headachey and I knew that I had more work that I needed to do and we've got our first NCT this evening which is like antenatal prenatal classes and whew, there you go I'm already out of breath. <laughs> <sighs> but I'm just like really worried about my energy for these classes. They're over the next six weeks, five or six weeks, and they are in the evenings and they are taking place at a local school. And the time that they are, which is like seven until 9.30, two and a half hours, two and a half hours. And during that time, normally I am lying on the sofa. <laughs> I am like wrapped in comfy clothes. I am just completely surrounded by like my giant maternity pillow. And if I'm doing anything in the evenings at all, my back is aching, like everything is hurting and I need to lie myself down on the sofa to get comfy again. And so I was like, hmm, two and a half hours of sitting on like shitty plastic high school chairs in the evening, like my body is not gonna be able to cope. And so I texted the person who's like hosting the sessions, like our trainer, trainee person, I don't know. Being like, can I bring pillows and blankets? Like, is that ridiculous? But um, she was very lovely. So I have with me a yoga mat <laughs> and a pillow and a blanket because I just, I know I'm not gonna be able to make it. I know that I'm just gonna be like sat in one of those chairs, just like in so much pain for two and a half hours. But she was very lovely. She was like, if you need to lie down, like get up, move around, like 
it's all fine. First antenatal class this evening. I got a big belly. What did you think, NCT? It wasn't the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> we learned about mucus plugs and the stages of labour and met some nice people. A few of them live walking distance from us and also have spent time at our local pub. So that's a good sign. So, I mean, it's really the most important thing. But um, I forgot to tell Dan that I'd um, picked up a pillow and blanket and stuff because I'd already told him to get stuff. So Dan left work early, came home, grabbed more stuff, deflated the pregnancy ball. And so we had a lot of supplies with us um, for the thing tonight. And I ended up just using one pillow behind my back at one point. Yeah. I was in a lot less pain tonight. Last night I was just so uncomfortable and so much pain that I was just like expecting that. <laughs> but I had a much more restful day today, so I think that's why my body mm. was a bit more behaved. But I definitely want to take um, pillow blanket and stuff again for future ones. Because I think also as everyone gets to know each other a bit better, we might feel more comfortable just lying on the floor. Yeah, how long is it? How long is what? Pregnancy? No, this fucking thing. Five or six weeks? Oh, right, so basically it takes you up to full term. I think our last one is the end of March. I don't know what you're considered full term, second week of April. I think I'm considered full term first week of April. That's when I'm 37 weeks, I think. I learnt when, when, to, when to panic. That was good. <laughs> when to panic, when to call the midwife. Wait, when do you panic? Never, Hannah. That's okay, the key. right, yeah, got it. Good. <laughs> Never panic. Everything's under control. Don't you worry, darling. We just got back from the 32 week scan and consultant and midwife appointments. We managed to squish them all in in one afternoon, which is very convenient. Baby is growing normally. They are 2,062 grams, which is about four pounds and nine ounces apparently. And they are now just below the 90th percentile. So it is a big-ish baby, but still in the normal range. They've basically grown a good 800 grams in the last four weeks. So, you know, they're, they're packing it on. Got our next scan and doctor's appointment at 36 weeks, but we're going to see the like local clinic midwife in two weeks time so the one that's like a short walk from us and not having to go to the hospital so that's handy but yeah other than all of the updates about the appointments the third trimester is just feeling very tiring and heavy and getting some real bad lower back pain any time i'm like very active like moving around a lot or sat down in just a regular chair for more than about 40 minutes, which is not ideal for my job because I do a lot of being sat down filming and podcast recordings. In the last couple of weeks for any podcast recording I do, I'm like sat there for that hour trying to interview a guest and just like slowly deteriorating and getting in more and more pain. Not fun, but I have ordered another ball to my office, to the studio. So hopefully I can do some like filming and recording whilst sat on that and it's not too like distracting or disruptive to the video or the podcast itself. But yeah, hopefully that helps. Also, I have a standing desk at the studio so I can kind of like lower it down much further um, to whatever height I need if I want to use the ball to like actually sit at my desk as well. So hopefully that helps. I told the midwife about my back pain and she just basically was like, yeah, <laughs> um, and recommended taking hot baths, which I might do. Like I'm not really a bath person, but like you know, if I'm struggling in the evening, then that might be something that I do. But ultimately, I know the things that aggravate it and I know the things that soothe it. So it is just a constant management and negotiation with my body. Like I was at a friend's 30th birthday party recently and being sat down 
I was just like in so much pain and then I like stood up for a while and was swaying and then was like bent over at one point just like leaning on a table and then that started to hurt and so I like sat back down again. Not a lot of fun. I cannot believe that it is like eight weeks until my due date. Like that is wild. That is no time at all. Five weeks and a bit until I go on maternity leave. I can't tell if this trimester is going slow or fast. All I know is that there is a lot to do in terms of my work and it seems like not a lot of time <laughs> to do it in. Oh, also at the scan, baby's head is down, their back is over here, bum here and legs like here, which makes a lot of sense because I often feel like the most powerful kind of movements and stuff up here. So that's like where the feet are kicking and stuff. Um, I am occasionally getting like twinges, like low down. And I'm like, is that their hands down there like hitting me? I don't quite know like where it is. I'm like, are they like punching me in the lower uterus or like punching my cervix? Or is it like a pelvis thing? It's really hard to try to figure out like where that like pain is, but it'll just be like a, ooh, and then it'll go. And also baby's kicks and movements are definitely starting to creep into the uncomfortable, painful <laughs> realm instead of like, oh, cute. <laughs> Most of the time it's still just like, okay, yeah, they're kicking. And then other times it's like, whoa. <coughs> okay, don't wind me, child. Wow, what a look, what a look. Last week I started to get what is known as lightning crotch. What a fun term. It's basically like really sharp shooting pains in your pelvic region and ooh, does it hurt. I don't normally endorse Googling symptoms, but I'm only human and I'm weak. I definitely Googled like sharp pelvic pains in third trimester and lightning crotch was everywhere. And then I asked a few people who are pregnant or have been pregnant before and they were like, oh yeah, I got the lightning crutch. And I was like, oh no, it's a thing. But I got it like a couple of times last week, but it hasn't really happened since. And so I'm kind of like hoping that I just experienced it a bit and not anymore because ouch, it mostly happened at night and I would be like trying to get to sleep and then there'd just be this like stab in my pelvis and it would be over like, pretty instantaneously but it was so painful that it kind of like shocks you and like takes out of you a bit and you have to recover but yeah really not fun there were two nights last week where it happened like quite a few times in the night and it was so painful that I literally was like ah like actually kind of like making a noise and screaming but it hasn't happened since then touch wood touch wood fingers crossed that's my experience of lightning crunch and no more we've just been to visit Dan's Nana how are you doing? Dan's driving. I'm very good, thank you. Yeah. Dan has got to the point now where he's impatient, wants yeah. baby to arrive. <laughs> it's the, in the last few days, you've just been like, right, come on, baby, <laughs> let's go. I don't feel quite ready yet, but I think that's mostly because of how much work I'm like, <laughs> I've got left to do. In the last couple days, I feel like I've started to get like, indigestion and heartburn. I, I don't entirely know because I've never really felt those things before and I was trying to describe how it felt to Dan. And he was like, sounds like you've got heartburn or whatever. But yeah, evenings, I just, it gets tight and I feel a bit sick and I'm like hungry but not hungry. And I don't know, I can't really eat a lot at the moment either. Like we just had fish and chips with Dan's Nana and I like, managed a third if that of my fish so that's new which is fun so i have a really fun third trimester <laughs> update i have piles yay let me read what the nhs says about piles in pregnancy because i cannot <laughs> remember officially what they are. Piles, also known as hemorrhoids, are swellings containing enlarged blood vessels inside or around your bottom, the rectum and anus. Anyone can get piles. They don't just happen in pregnancy. When you're pregnant, piles can occur because hormones make your veins relax. So yeah, 
I got piles. Um, I don't know how long I've had piles for, but I noticed it yesterday when I was in the shower um, and I was giving my bum a bit of a wash and I was like, oh, there's a lump. <laughs> So like a little, basic, what does it say? It says a lump hanging, so there's other symptoms as well, but one of them is a lump hanging outside the anus, which may need to be pushed back in after passing stool. Obviously I don't pass stool, but I do regularly pass rectum mucus. And I've been noticing that my bum hole has been getting really sore. Um, and that's basically because like most people who have a functioning bowel, go for a shit maybe once a day. And so they're wiping their ass once a day. Great. I, on the other hand, have a leaky bum hole <laughs> from my rectal stump um, where the mucus comes out. And that basically happens every time I go to the toilet. And I'm also 34 weeks pregnant. So I am going to the toilet a lot. And every time I sit on the toilet, just like it comes out. And so I'm wiping my ass her many times a day, which just, is sore and not fun. And now that I have this pile, this lump coming out my bum hole, not as fun, just a less fun. So I'm trying to be gentle with it and kind of like dab it instead of wiping. But we have a midwife appointment tomorrow. So I'm gonna bring it up and just be like, anything I can do? Because the NHS website talks about like eating more fiber and changing your diet. And I'm like, well, my rectum is not attached to my digestive system. So that is gonna have zero impact. And also I can't help but need to wipe my ass like 10 times a day. I'm sleeping really badly at the moment as well. I'm like getting up a lot to go to the toilet, not being able to get comfy. I've had to add another pillow in between my legs on top of my pregnancy pillow because I feel like I just need my hips to be wider at night. I'm really feeling it. I'm like, am I done? I feel done. Can I be done now? <laughs> so I'm gonna have a go at doing some perineal massage. Some people say that doing this helps reduce severe tearing, although I don't really know <laughs> how conclusive that evidence is, but hey, I know one person who highly recommended it and didn't tear, another person who did it and got a third degree tear. So like, who knows, but we're gonna give it a crack just for like peace of mind as well of just like stretching out my vagina towards my anus, like the whole perineum bit, like, like giving that a good workout, I think will just, I don't know, soothe some of my worries, even if like it doesn't actually do anything. So, you know, placebo, I guess. If you're gonna tear, you're gonna tear. But I have got trimmed nails, clean hands, I've got some oil, and I'm gonna give this a go. I've watched some videos. <laughs> I think I can reach. Oil up those thumbs. We're going in. So it's not meant to be sexual at all. It's in fact meant to be kind of uncomfortable because you're like stretching. Oh, can I reach? I'm doing some stretching. Okay, yeah, I can see how that is uncomfortable. I'm guessing if it's uncomfortable, I'm doing it right. Okay, that, my, what's it? My right side felt a lot more flexible than my left does. But that might also be my position because I'm kind of like tilted towards. Right, now we do some sweeping motions. I've lost the bottom of my vagina. <laughs> right, I think for a first attempt, we did well. I will try again. I don't know if it's one of those things that you're supposed to like feel it getting stretchier and feel it getting easier, or if just like on the day of birth, you find out, who knows. It's official, we've got the short mum hair. It's here, but oh my goodness, today has been a bad body day. At first, I thought maybe I got a stitch on my left-hand side, which is not fun, <laughs> like even when you're not pregnant. I hate having stitches, but it's just stayed all day, just like this ache. And I'm like, have I pulled something in the side of my bump? And then also the last couple of days, especially in the evenings, like the side of my stoma has been feeling like sore 
again and I'm like oh no is it getting bigger because for the last few weeks it has been so well behaved the bump has grown a lot but I didn't feel like the stoma had grown a lot and I was living my best life and enjoying that I had bags that worked and I wasn't thinking about my stoma that has changed these last couple of days and I'm like ow stitch or pulled muscle on one side and then like ow like sore stoma on the other side and then also my back has just been really bad today and i just wanted to turn the camera on and complain about it all it's not fun <laughs> like i just did so much pain and like everything feels really tight and so i want to kind of like be wearing loose clothes and stuff and like let the belly breathe but then i also feel like i want something tight on the stoma to kind of stop the stoma bag maybe like moving so much and things catching on it so much if I could like protect it oh, I don't know I'm gonna change my stoma bag tomorrow morning and try and measure it again I like tried measuring it yesterday and I think it's a bit bigger than 45 millimeters now but I don't know I don't want to fall into the same trap that I did before where I started cutting bigger because it was hurting and then cutting bigger made it worse because then I was getting poo on my skin and that was like causing irritation. It's really hard to measure like by yourself as well. Ugh. Everything hurts. Right, I need to lie down in a position that isn't gonna hurt me because whatever way I'm sat right now is not working for the side of my belly that feels like it's got a stitch. Pregnancy is beautiful. It's the miracle of life. So I just had a phone call with my midwife and I mentioned that suddenly today, my hands are swollen. I thought I'd escaped the like swollenness that a lot of people get in their third trimester. Although I so far <laughs> have still escaped it on my feet and my ankles and my legs. I have very narrow ankles and feet and so I've got lots of <laughs> small dainty shoes so I'm very glad that that hasn't happened yet um, because that would be frustrating but literally just today I noticed that my hands are really swollen but also like the weather's gotten warmer so it could also be that but one of the things that the midwife said was do you still have your rings on and I was like yes because one of the <laughs> ways that I noticed that my hands were swollen was because I could no longer easily like pull my rings off and she was like you might want to take them off and I was like oh really she was like yeah a lot of people tend to get um bigger like they might get more swollen and some people even have to have their rings cut off their fingers and I do not want that I've got my wedding band and then also my engagement ring um although the engagement ring is like a family heirloom I guess um, that I got from my granny when I was 18. So really don't want <laughs> either of these to be cut up. So I'm gonna try and take them off, which hopefully should be okay. Okay, wait, there we go. One. Oh, don't roll away, there we go. Okay, that's weird. That's gonna be so weird, like not wearing these, but hey, better safe than sorry. 36 weeks and feeling <laughs> just particularly <laughs> massive today, but I don't know whether that's <laughs> the trousers. <laughs> doing it. Um, I'm very glad that spring has kind of come because I can bust out this Lucy and Yak number. Look how stretchy these are. Oh yeah. Are you ready to find out how big baby's gotten? Yep. And make a, a birth preferences plan? <laughs> Not plan? I bet on none gross. Gain? Yep. Yeah. In in my clue app this morning though, it said that you may have a third trimester ultrasound to check for the fetus's position and size. Size measurements can be pretty inaccurate at this stage because the fetus is too big to take exact measurements. And uh, it's too big to measure. Too big to measure. But it always has given us like a range. It's like it tells yeah. us like the estimate, but then with like give or take this large sum. <laughs> We just got back from the 36 week scan and we saw um, one of the midwives after as well. We were there much longer than expected because we had a big long chat with the midwife and blood tests 
She took a look at my belly again. Baby's head is in a good position. They're not engaged yet. Engaged, which is when they like move down, but she said they're like on their way. But yeah, Dan was correct. Always. Baby had grown basically 900 grams since the last scan. Give or take some. Give or take some, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they are currently, give or take, six pounds nine, which is like an actual baby size. What is that? That's like three, almost three kilos, right? Yeah. they're. They're yeah. 2.9 kilos. Yeah. We had lots of chats with the midwife about like um, labour and like induction and options and and everything. But I think we're still cracking on with the OG birth centre plan, basically. Yeah. We've got another scan at 39 weeks though, so. Yeah. And then wax and fingers up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got um, a consultant appointment on Friday and then nothing next week. And then basically like... I think we'll just like have appointments every week then until the baby comes, really. <laughs> Any more thoughts about the baby? I feel confident as always. <laughs> I don't really, you know, I'm just, I've, I feel like I've got, you know, good appreciation for what will occur. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll be there and I will be prepared to assist wherever, wherever. Will you tell them about your um, side hustle? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it depends on how, how, how well it goes. It's just start up the Dan, Dan the Doula Services Limited. <laughs> Dan the Doula. Dan the Doula. Love it. Just got back from a doctor's appointment at the hospital and not really much to report. It's just kind of like you're in the home stretch now. Got my scan at 39 weeks, potentially doing the sweepy sweep thing and then just birth. Just birth. Today feels like a bit of a milestone day because tomorrow I am 37 weeks, which is what is classed as full term. Like baby is going to be fully cooked. We had our like baby shower, pre-baby <laughs> party thing yesterday. And it was the last time that I'm seeing all of these people before <laughs> there's gonna be a baby and I'm a mum, like what? And next week is my last week of work. So it's just like, <laughs> feels like a bit of a, a threshold really coming into the end of this experience of pregnancy. Today I printed out my birth preferences and so we've got copies of that to give to staff when we're in. The hospital bag is packed, we are pretty much ready for baby, like there is a buggy in our hallway and there is a crib by our bed. Oh what? <laughs> And today I just had like another like moment of realization that I have to give birth. <laughs> like that's real. <laughs> like that's that's something that is in my imminent future and is going to happen. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> One of the games that my sister got for the baby shower that we played was Sperm Splat. I didn't actually win it. I wasn't very good at it, but I guess this is the winner. <laughs> the Sperm Splatted and now I'm pregnant and about to give birth. The whole they're going to be a baby thing still feels very abstract. Like I cannot picture my life, this person. I'm very excited though. It is 20 to 10 in the evening on a Sunday <laughs> and we just got back from the hospital because I went in to be monitored because um, I felt like I was having reduced baby movements. It feels like a rite of passage for a first pregnancy. I was honestly surprised that we hadn't already gone in because there's been lots of times where I'm like, oh, I've not really felt them much today. And then suddenly I'll just like be chilling out and they'll start kicking or Dan will come over and start talking to them and then they start moving. But I don't know, it just felt a bit different this evening and the last like two days have been really active and I tend to not feel them as much or like think about it as much, like notice. Um, when I'm moving around. So we went into the hospital, um, but it was all good and it was really quick. And they like put me on the monitor. So it was like monitoring baby's heartbeat and I could hear it and then monitoring me as well. And then also gave me a little clickery thing where like anytime I felt the baby move, I would like press it. And um, there was a bit where I'd like felt them like do a big old roll <laughs> and their heart rate just like spiked but apparently that's all fine <laughs> um but i just thought it was really funny that it's just like they start being really active and suddenly 
heart rate increases, but that's the humans for you. I am physically and emotionally exhausted <laughs> from this weekend, from today, from just going into the hospital and pregnancy in general. Of course, as soon as we actually got into the hospital, I started to feel baby move a bit more. We now have a crib. <laughs> so weird, so weird. And that brings us to today. Overall, even though trimester three has been painful, I would take the aches and pains of this any day over the illness and the fatigue and the nausea and just feeling awful in trimester one. Like my brain and like my energy levels are so normal. Like I feel like a healthy person who has just been carrying around a lot of weight 24 seven <laughs> all of the time rather than a sick person, which I felt like in trimester one. In terms of a final stoma update, yes, I had those like couple of days of pain where I thought that maybe my stoma was growing again, but luckily, that was just like two days and it's been fine since. So I'm cutting like 45 millimeters up down and then just above that wide and it's been grand and I've really not had any issues with my stoma for like the last month or so. Touch wood, touch wood. Very, very grateful for that. It's weird because my bump and my belly has definitely been growing and it's as if my stoma has just like reached maximum capacity. It's like, that is just its limit. It's not gonna get any bigger than that because even though everything else is getting bigger, the stoma's like staying the same size. And the bags that I've got are working great. And so I'm just like, <laughs> so happy that that's just not something that I'm having to think about right now. Just, it's all going very smoothly. Again, touch wood. So I mentioned the sweep in <laughs> some of those vlog clips, the little sweepy sweep. So this is where like the midwife basically gives your cervix a little, little massage, a little nudge. This is my very botched <laughs> understanding of this, but it's meant to kind of like help warm up the cervix and maybe like get things going. Our midwife said that most people for their first pregnancies will need two sweeps and you don't have to have one. It's just something that is offered from like 39 weeks. So. 39 weeks, I'm keen <laughs> to have a little sweepy sweep. And then if I've not gone into labor a week later, I'll go back in at 40 weeks and have another little sweepy sweep. So we'll see, just, just like warm up the cervix and then let the cervix kind of like do its own thing. With the perineal massage, I tried that once. I have not tried it since <laughs> filming that. Not because I don't want to, but I just like haven't found the time and I haven't like felt motivated to do it. And then it gets to the point where like my nails have grown out and I'm like, Ugh, I need to trim my nails if I'm gonna like do this. And then also for a while I had like a cut on the side of my thumb. So I was just like, that hurts. Like, let's not be sticking my thumbs up my vagina whilst it's all kind of like a bit sore and stuff. I don't know if I'm gonna carry on doing it. I, there's a part of me that's like, why not Hannah? Like, come on. But maybe now that I'm gonna be on maternity leave and I'm just like <laughs> a bit more chill, maybe I'll do some like daytime perineal massage instead of like it being nighttime and like getting into bed and just being like, oh, I just wanna go to sleep and I need to stretch out my perineum. <laughs> so we'll see, but I haven't done any of that since, <laughs> just, just the one time. In terms of other third trimester symptoms that I was having, the lightning crotch where it was like that shooting pain at night and like making me literally scream, um, that was just two nights of that, but I still occasionally get like these kind of like spasms in my groin and then also kind of like upper thigh like groin area and that's kind of like sometimes when I'm just walking sometimes when I'm just sitting down and it's just like this like twinge but it feels really different to those really sharp shooting pains that I had just those like two nights so I'm not sure if that's still lightning crutch but I've also just been calling it thunder groin but <laughs> that's just my own term for it but that's annoying <laughs> I was saying goodbye to a friend the other day and giving him a hug just as I like <laughs> caught a spasm in my leg and I was just like oh and he thought that he'd like hurt me and was like oh no oh my god what's happened and I was like no it wasn't you 
So yeah, it's it's a weird one. I'm just like making lots of noises and grunting a lot when I'm just like, oh, ah, ooh, blah, blah, like all of these pains. Um, it's a bit ridiculous. And then like the heartburn and like indigestion that I was experiencing, again, that was just like two days of it. And I'm not sure if it was like related to eating an entire tube of Pringles <laughs> because I haven't really experienced it since. And so I'm like, Maybe it was just the Pringles. Maybe I went too hard on the Pringles. But I'm really glad that that's gone because that was like very uncomfortable in the evening and was like really interfering with me being able to eat and my appetite and stuff. But now I'm too scared to eat Pringles and I love Pringles. Even though a lot of the aches and pains like the backache or just like the front abdominal like tummy ache of just everything being really heavy, even though it is painful. If I just like lie down on my side with like my pregnancy pillow like wrapped around me in a good position for like 10 minutes, I feel fine. And so that is really good for me because it just means that like, you know, if I'm walking home and I'm like in so much <laughs> agony, I'm just like, oh, it's fine though. Because in like 15 minutes, I'm gonna be feeling grand rather than it just being like this perpetual ache. like. I know ways to manage it and stuff. So that I'm very grateful for. So that is trimester three. And before I kind of clue you in on how my maternity leave is gonna go and like content and all of that kind of stuff, here is a final like bump update at 37 weeks. So this is my 37 weeks bump. This is the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like I've massively grown recently. But the interesting thing is I do think I've got that like pregnancy line thing. So most of this is my scar from my surgeries, but I've been able to see that it like continues up here. Like my scar ends here and there's like a little faint line that continues here. And the scar is on this side, but then there's like an extra line here that runs alongside it. And then I cannot see <laughs> below my bump. Um, but Dan was saying to me, and then I got like my phone out <laughs> on the front facing camera so I could see the situation. The line basically continues like past where my scar ends again, like similar to up top. So I do have that little pregnancy line. I've kind of got like pregnancy line and scar like running alongside each other. Also, you know how lots of people who have innies and then they get pregnant and it turns into an outie? Well, my surgery has just completely destroyed <laughs> any kind of signs of a belly button that I had. And I don't know, it was just like this weird slit in my tummy. Um, and now what's happened is I don't have an outie, but it's like raised it enough that it's all gone flat. So I now like have this like flat belly button. <laughs> situation it's very strange this is a situation when i'm braless the boobs just on top of the bump which is what i was expecting and something that i genuinely like wanted to happen i was like it's gonna be great it'll just be like a boob shelf unfortunately i haven't been able to catch any video footage of when the baby moves but i do often kind of like see my tummy just being like very much like alien but yeah there we go there's my 37 weeks Bump update. So maternity leave. I am taking three months off, which means there's gonna be no videos on this channel, no videos on the More Hannah channel, and no doing it podcast episodes coming out for about three months. And then the like return, my grand <laughs> re-entering into society, into the internet society will be around the three month mark. I'm not entirely sure yet, but if you want accurate updates about like when the first videos and podcasts and stuff back are going to be, then the best places to kind of keep up to date on all of that is Instagram, my newsletter and my Patreon. Those are all places that will still be updated. The newsletter is gonna have some guest takeovers for it, which I'm very excited for. And Patreon, even though there's not gonna be like some of the more regular perks on offer, I will still be active in the Discord server and kind of like posting updates there as well. My patrons are usually the first people to know about anything and then newsletter people and then kind of like the wider social media realm. In terms of my Instagram usage, I'm just gonna try and use Instagram like a regular person and not treat it like work and just like post updates and just post stuff 
when I want to, if I want to. And of course, the Hormone Diaries is going to be continuing when I come back because I'm sure I will have lots to share about the birth, about postpartum, about breastfeeding, hopefully. So we will see and I will share as much of that as possible <laughs> with you. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you just so much for all of your kind words and support during this pregnancy. It has been really fun to document and I know a lot of you are kind of like at similar stages or a bit behind, a bit in front with like your pregnancies or you have kids already and it's been really cool to like read about your experiences and kind of like be going through all of this together. So um, if you are also pregnant, I wish you the best of luck and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you are all doing well and I'll see you in my next video in about three months time. <laughs> Bye.